All right, guys, welcome back. Um, so we already have the program uh, downloaded and it's already up in our computer. Hopefully you're at the step right now. And right now we're going to go ahead and talk about the functionality of this entire program right now, or at least a lot of the different options that are available. So we're going to start at the top with the transport bar. This is basically the playback section and record section. So we're going to have very obvious functions like pause, play, stop, uh, going to the beginning of the project. Uh, so skip to start, skip to the end and record. Now the playback uh, function, which is uh, actually used by hitting the space bar, uh, has a secondary function for looping. And you're going to want to hit the, the shift button right here, or the shift option right there on your keyboard to create a little loop. So I don't know if you saw that. Let's go ahead and take a look at how that changed into a little loop icon. So essentially, if you have a piece of audio right here in the arrangement window, then you're going to be able to uh, select a specific area of that audio and loop it. So this is going to be helping you for different editing options. Okay. And then of course you have your record options and this is pretty much what the transport bar is all about. The next section we're going to go over is the tool section. So there's different tools right here. We have your selector tool or selection tool, your envelope tool, as you can see right there, you have your pencil or draw tool. You have different zooming options right here. So your zoom tool. Right here you have your time shift tool. And this is going to help you when you're um, essentially working with tracks. You want to, you're going to definitely get into the time shift tool, especially because there might be latency issues and things like that. So you're going to need this one. <laughs> and then this last one is the multi tool, uh, which encompasses all these tools in one tool function. Essentially the way that this works is once there's a piece of audio in here, depending on where your mouse is on that piece of audio or on that audio region, the tool will actually change to one of these functions right here so that you don't have to select back and forth. Now let's go ahead and talk about our, I guess, listening back options and our recording options. So this section right here is this bottom section is pretty much linked up to this section right here. So this is all about the audio output right here. So once we have a piece of audio in there, we can see exactly how loud it is. This is like our meter bar and we're going to be able to, de to detect its peak levels and its RMS levels. So how exactly how quiet it is, how loud it is. And we're going to be able to see that uh, with color options as well uh, with a green meter being uh, basically saying it's okay. And a red meter saying that it's peaking, which is bad. It's bad for your speakers, bad for the mix, makes it muddy, makes it sound terrible. And you're going to be able to see this all right here. And again, this is connected to this option right here. So if you have, let's say speakers or anything else that you want to connect your audio to, you could actually do that right here uh, with this function right here. Makes it a, a lot simpler than digging into one of these options in the back. Now the next section we have right here is our audio input. So if we have, let's say like an interface, we'll be able to choose that interface right here. For now, we're just going to keep it in built-in input. And we're going to be able to see exactly how loud the sound going into the computer is by using these meters right here. Pretty easy to understand. Um, we have a left and right option. So this is for our stereo options. And we also have a mono input channel as well. So depending on if we're using an interface or if we're uh, just recording directly into it, like how are we going to have the audio come out as either as mono or as stereo, we can make those options. Uh, or decisions right here. Okay, uh, next I want to quickly go over is our audio sound card options. So that's this right here. So if you're wor working on your internal computer's uh, audio card, it'll probably pick up that as a default and you're, you're going to usually want to keep that just selected as is unless you have a uh, sound card option that you want to choose instead of it. Okay, so for now we'll just keep that right there. Uh, next, we'll go ahead and talk about, again, a little bit more about the uh, input and output volume level stuff. Uh, so right here, this is our output level. So we can decide exactly um, how loud or how quiet we have that. And as you can see right here, this little speaker icon for Mac changes a little bit. Uh, I'm going to keep that one as is. And you could also do the same for the uh, input volume as well. So. If you have, if you're connected, let's say directly into your computer and uh, you want to go ahead and adjust the volume level, like if it's not coming out loud enough right here, you can adjust that right here. OK, 
Okay. And it also works the same with your interface. If your interface for some reason isn't uh, loud enough, you can either, you know, boost that up or take that down right here. Now let's go ahead and take a look below. Right here are different, uh, more audit, uh, editing <laughs> tools in Audacity. We have your cut tool, your copy right here. That's this one right here. You have your paste. Right here, you have a trim audio selection and a silence selection. You have an undo function right here and a redo function. And then again, uh, some syncing audio or a uh, sync lock track options right here, which is going to be very handy. Essentially, what this does right here is if you're working with multiple tracks, you can actually make sure that they stay in sync by locking them together. So once you sync them and you lock them, they stay in sync. It's really great for editing. Right here, you're going to have different um, view functions. Uh, so th these are your zoom in, your zoom out. If you're working with a piece of audio, like an audio region, you can fit that uh, selection uh, to the arrangement window so you see it a little bit better. And if you want to see the entire project, you can uh, choose the fit project option. Now this option right here, this section right here is a little bit different. Essentially this is like uh, playback speed. Uh, this doesn't really uh, change the tempo of your project at the end, but it does help with editing. So let's say you're working on a section where the drumming timing is a little bit off and you want to slow it down and see exactly where that's that, that problem area really is and uh, kind of get in the nitty gritty of it. You can actually slow down that uh, the playback of that, of that specific track or the entire track itself of the entire project and uh, listen a little bit clearer. Or if you want to skip to section uh, a little bit quicker, you can make the that selection right here making it three times faster. So if you're playing at, let's say, a tempo of 100, it would go to a tempo of 300. So uh, pretty easy to understand. And it doesn't affect the overall project at all. It just affects while you're editing. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom right here. Oops. Now what this is, this very first section is, it's basically the overall project's quality, the sound quality that you're going to get. So right here, we already have it at uh, 44, 100 uh, hertz. And we can make different uh, option changes right here. So if we want to make it you know, a, a lesser quality, which I don't recommend, uh, the default's uh, fine enough. It's actually a CD quality as it is. Or you can bring it up to a higher quality just in case you want to bring this to, let's say, another uh, recording program later on, uh, like Pro Tools or Logic or something like that. You can do that right here. Let's go ahead and move that back to where it was. Um, you have a, a snap to function. So this is going to help you, I guess, uh, snap to specific bars and beats. Your selection starts. So it starts at a default right here at a zero, zero beat, zero measures uh, and end. So if you want to go ahead and make sure that it, it ends at, let's say, uh, 32 um, beats or measures or whatever, uh, milliseconds and hours and times a minute that you want you could set that right there and right here we'll give you your audio position as uh, the playhead is moving so as you hit play uh, this will change and you'll know exactly where you're at in the song so that's this section right here so that's basically it we um, pretty much discovered a lot of the layout of audacity but before we even get into recording into audacity or even importing audio files into audacity we're going to want to go ahead and and set up some of our preferences. And we're gonna go ahead and learn how to do that in the next video. So I'll catch you guys for that one. Thanks for watching this video. And if you're watching this video and you're not currently enrolled to the Recording Connection, this is only a small taste of what you could be learning in our program. The Recording Connection provides all of our students with industry standard software, like Pro Tools, to take your engineering skills to the next level. We also provide books with excellent lesson plans, a professional studio engineer who will mentor you and show you how to operate real studio equipment, and so much more. With the Recording Connection, getting finance is a breeze. We have many different tuition options, so getting hooked up at a studio near you is fast and easy. For more information, check out www.recordingconnection.com. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next video.